Hello, kind listener. Welcome to episode six of Fodder Fire. Brian and I talk about all kinds of fun summertime things, and uh, I think we talk about some evil preachers. I don't fucking know, man. Check it out. Sting one, two, three. Episode six. Can you believe it? <laughs> yes. We have 50 viewers now. Yeah. 50 views. 50 views. Could yeah. just be one guy jerking off, listening to it over and over times. again. Yeah. Yeah. Probably. It's probably yeah. someone that I'm really close to, too. Could be one of us. <laughs> it's me. I can admit it. <laughs> no, I got super stoked because the one video, they're all almost 40, but for some reason, number four is the magic video, and we just hit 50 views on that. Yeah. Work Are they almost there. 40? I saw one only had nine views. I was pretty disappointed what about one? that. I don't know. One of them, I thought. Oh, was it Octopus Party? For that one, but also one of ours only had nine views. No. So we got to pump up the views on that. Maybe Do you think it didn't tell me the right number? It didn't tell you the right one. It lied it, to me? Yeah. It, YouTube is a lying son the of a fuck, bitch. dude? So if you just look up Fodder Fire, yeah. five views... Two views for number one. That's what I'm talking about. Watch this. Had... Oh, okay. Open it. Oh, my God, phone. Yeah, we might be in the dead zone back here. Probably. When, um, so when you actually open it, it will show you the actual views. Back. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, that's encouraging. I don't know why YouTube is lying its ass off to us. but Yeah, show the real numbers, YouTube. Yeah. It's 50, okay? Show Not me nine. the truth. Yeah. <laughs> Nine. Well, they put 48 for the one that has 50, I think. Yeah. I said, Why does it do that? That's so weird. Why does it do that? Yeah, that is super strange. Never, so, uh, yeah, never really looked into it. Yeah. I've got a bunch. Of, I've got a bunch of videos on my. Maybe we should make our. I don't know. Should we make our a different page for it, or just keep putting it on my page? Now that we have a bunch of them, I'm like, well, I guess maybe we, they should deserve their own page now. But then it's gonna. We're gonna have to like move all our 50 viewers. Well, Anyways, we'll figure it out. I don't know how it I don't works. Know. I think the video. I don't know. Just leave it on mine. I don't know I'm how. Fine, that leaving would work. it on mine. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, with yours? my Carly Rae Jepsen covers. One of my Carly Rae Jepsen covers has like a thousand Does views. It? Yes. I'm sitting next to a royalty <laughs> right now. I'm just like, <laughs> kind of a big deal. Uh, dude, I've been waiting deal. for her to call me up and <laughs> and thank me. <laughs> You <laughs> oh my god Put some yeah weird. she could at least call me up and be like oh come help me write this song clint i like your perspective i mean give me a chance carly i think we could be friends i'm not familiar with her she had the big call me maybe was the big tune oh really i'm gonna talk a little bit closer to the mic you, you need me adjust that a little bit oh, for you that's pretty good that's probably, yeah that's pretty good there, there we go. go there that's better uh you remember call me maybe yeah uh, i met I you that. And this is crazy. Call me Here's maybe. my number. Yeah, she has that song, but she has a lot of good songs too. Actually, oh, you didn't like that up, huh? I, well, I can't look into your you. eyes. I, when okay. I, there you go. I'm still that, and then this one. Yeah, mic stands. I should probably. I'll invest in some better mic stands. That's a good investment. These aren't bad. These are good. They've been through the ringer, dude. Look at them. They got battle scars. Were these from the old punk rock days? They're all from some kind of punk rock days. Yeah, for sure. They're okay. all they've all seen seen some kind of battle it on the like on it. the live stages of northern Michigan. A few sword shings <laughs> here and there. Yeah, dude. Lots of pissed off unloading equipment and loading it back up and just throwing shit in my car and being like Fuck you. I just recently started like wrapping my cords properly oh, really? after like decades of just not. How's, how's proper? You do it. Uh, real interesting stuff here that where you do it, you like roll it the right way first, um, like a loop. You loop it, but then you loop it kind of backwards and then you keep going back and forth. It's kind of hard to to explain, but here. Uh, 
the listeners can't see this, but just so you can hear it, Brian's amazing. You go like this, Luke. and that, but then the next one you go like this. Oh, that's backwards. Backwards it, and then what forward, the and then fuck? backwards. And it took me a whole day trying to the mind fuck of going backwards why, with the cord. Why this? You know, Lincoln. All right, we got a dog in here. He's Lincoln. a good boy. I might run over his tail though, and I might bark. So I'm sorry ahead of time if I do that. Yeah. But yeah, why backwards? I don't know. Why wouldn't they just make it like uh, go the right easy way? You just wrap around your elbow. I don't know. I'm not sure this is. Yeah. I was actually taught to do it incorrectly at Northern Michigan University in the audio engineering <laughs> class. So they taught you incorrectly there. God, yeah. What the that? fuck? <laughs> you need to go back and start know, a cord wrapping class. Refund, dude. Yeah. That's true. I should probably start my own cord wrapping class or at least like stand outside with a sign and that says like lies are are propagated. Yeah. At this. Your raps are lies. Your, yeah, yeah, your raps are lies. You're fucked up. Take out your rapping audiology class. There's some crazy ass uh, cord bundling methods I've been seeing at work. There's there. Well, yeah, you know, yeah, dude, you're in looks, the cord game. <laughs> it looks like a bunch of loops. Like that one is chain in, link. Right, almost. right, right. That one's one that you're not supposed to use for audio cords, but obvious for whatever cords you use. I'm sure there are like, cords. Like one ten electrical. Yeah. Okay. Those cords, maybe you do it that crazy, like Daisy. I don't, what do you call it? Like it's braided almost. It's yeah, like, it looks braided as shit. And then what? Is that easy to undo? Like it just kind of unwraps itself? They I imagine say, there's a reason. They say that. They yeah. say it's easier. But honestly, like I just do the elbow wrap. I've yeah. been doing that my whole life. Yeah. So it works just fine. You just throw it out. Yeah. Um, some dudes at work are like, it's a lot easier. You see, and they like go to unwrap it and they're like battling it. And it's just like, <laughs> oh, okay. So it's just fucking yeah, not easier it's so it's insane yeah it's just yeah. you're you're an insane person yeah it's uh, i would do the cord wrapping with the audio cords but they always get tangled up it's pretty crazy if you do it this way and i just leave them like on stacked on top of each other they don't get tangled like you, they just kind oh, of really? pull out nicely yeah really? but if you do the elbow meth they'll, ine- they'll inevitably tangle through each other and like you'll have to undo some knots or something yeah so you know i've been it's kind of a big change in my lifestyle, honestly, like putting effort into organizing things so it's ready for next time. Yeah. It's a pretty big step for Clint That's a big Bryan. deal. That's yeah. it. It's fucking going, going <laughs> top notch here. Going top notch. Hey, man. 37 now, you know. It's time to bundle cords properly. That's a, that's going to be a first step. Next remember, step, folding laundry. I remember when I was 37. You're older than that? I don't know. You're a million eight years old. <laughs> Actually, ages? I don't know how old. I'm either 37 or 38, one of the two. When's your birthday? August 23rd. I th- oh, man, I better not be 38. I was Hopefully born. You're not 39. That would be intense. Yeah, I know. Fuck that. <laughs> I'm not ready for 40. Yet. Like, I had a life crisis when I hit 30. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's pretty typical which i've kind of feel i kind of had a midlife crisis when i was like or er, like 33 4 pretty much before i met liana i was pretty much in an insane midlife crisis yeah yeah that's... <laughs> so uh but yeah it's fun it was fun i had a good time your, what was your yours crisis? like mine was terrible i was yeah. like i turned 30 i was living in my cabin in the field by the hops mm-hmm. farm I wasn't in a bad position, but I started thinking about my future and I was a foreman at a landscape install company Mm -hmm. and I realized my boss was a dickweed Yeah, and he's been playing me for like 15 years or more. So a long term relationship with this, with this. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, That hurts. And he was super manipulative and I was like this, what I'm learning here and I do here doesn't transfer to anything. My body's not going to last forever. And this is eventually what led me to go back to school. Yeah. Um, but like my whole life, he was like, oh, he like, treat, you know, called me his work son and like treating me like that. And but he was also a very big asshole. And yeah. uh, he was like, well, when I retire, you're going to take over the business one day. And one day I came into work and this kid that like drank liquor and smoked pot on the job. My boss was like so soft on them. And I think it was because he could pay them little. Yeah. Um, That kid comes in the truck one day and he's like, oh, yeah. Gordon's or my boss, <laughs> the boss said, uh, uh, I'm gonna get to take over the business when he retires. And I, I mean, maybe I can buy from him or something. I don't know. I was like, okay, like yeah. right there, 
I was driving our truck and I just like stared out the windshield like with the saddest. Yeah. Yeah. Like a stare. Yeah. This dork. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> doesn't even know what's that, going on. That kid gets... was a piece of shit. Yeah. Um, I like his voice. <laughs> yeah. He's a fucking weirdo. He like, he, he was like his, so it's a complex like psychological evaluation of him. I guess I shouldn't say complex, but like he was a mama's boy. His mom always spoiled him and took care of him. His brother always took care of him. Like this kid could go starting shit and his big brother would always come and save him no matter what. Yeah. And they both got their asses kicked together plenty of times, but he didn't, he had no, I don't know what you would call it. He didn't know when to stop. He didn't know like boundaries and like, sure. He came in, all he did was smoke and drink all day. He put no effort into anything and he wanted to be foreman. And he eventually just did like all the, a bunch of like behind the back fucking bullshit. And to I become ca- foreman. Yeah. Yeah. And him and the other young guys got together and like I went in for my spring review with my boss. He's like, well, I'm not giving you a raise. I was like, that's fine. I'm, I make good money. I wasn't expecting one. And he's like, and I'm demoting you as foreman and I'm promoting this kid as foreman. And I was oh. like, and Yeah. It was fucked up. And <laughs> oh, yeah, we were in that. A2 Brute. Yeah, A2 Brute <laughs> for sure, dude. I was like, A2 work papa. <laughs> <laughs> we were at that little cafe uh, right on 72 by Tom's there. Okay, What's okay that wait, let again? me think about that. In the that complex. Aura? Is that, yeah, I think Aura it's Aura. Bean. Something like that. Yeah. And it's it was aura. just him and I and a girl working the counter there. Oh. And I was like, are you fucking crazy? Yeah, did you blow up on him? <laughs> yeah, I blew yeah, up. Yeah. And he was just like, you're not trying hard. And I was like, I've been working with like fucked up ribs, bad back, bad yeah. joints. Because that job wears on you. And these yeah. kids are like spry and fresh. Yeah, sure. And um, and he's like, I didn't know that. And I was like, I told you five times. You don't offer workman's comp. We have no health care like through you. It's like. Yeah, I've just been toughing it out like you say to do, and he just he played dumb. He was yeah, that's where he was fucked up. Like he would backtrack and yeah. just totally yeah, stick and just with be it. Like ah, I don't remember that, whatever. Yep. Yeah. Oh my god, it was crazy. Shitty dude. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I got out of that, and I'm in a way better work situation now. Yeah, that's tough, man. That's the name of the game in this pretty much this whole area. Probably a lot of small towns. It's just like take advantage of. Whoever you can to keep your business running, yeah, <laughs> you know, exactly. and pay as little as possible. Holy and, shit, it is. Yeah, that's terrible. And just be like, yeah, promise things and be like, have live in this pretend world where you give a fuck about your employees, but you know, at the end of the day, you're getting on your boat or whatever and fucking doing your thing, and it doesn't matter what old. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, <clears throat> when I did, I had another shitty job after that. Yeah, when I was in college, and that boss absolutely hated me yeah and he was way worse than the worst one before and uh i knew a dude that worked there before and he got me in and uh he like beforehand he was like hey i gotta give you like a heads up here don't ever ever fucking talk back to this guy yeah and i was like how bad can it be yeah and the dude was like sitting there just ragging on me for six months yeah and then finally one day I made fun of him, said he had a little dick and a and he had a bald head, you know, and I made fun of him for all that. And yeah. like he fucking lost it. And oh, for geez. two and a half years made my life hell, dude. <laughs> and he was a fucking nutcase. Oh, sounds like you put yourself through the ringer with a couple jobs, dude. Yeah. That's enough yeah. to break a man's spirit. Yeah. What was the second job? I'm sorry. Uh that. glass and mirror manufacturing. Oh, okay. Fuck. That sounds hard. It it, it it was and it wasn't. Um, I was just in a sit- shitty situation because I was never going to do good, even if I did do good. Yeah. And then if I didn't do good, it was fucking hell on. Like, it it was yeah. just fucking brutal. It was retarded. It was It's kind of like a big boys club there. Yeah. It's not a huge company. They just built a new location, and I think they've probably hired a few people since, but... It was like a giant goddamn boys club. Yeah. Like no nothing was based off real skill except for they had one guy, he was an installer, the head installer, and he's an amazing worker and they knew that. They paid him good, took care of him, but yeah. like other than that, it was just like a big fucking Yeah. mind fuck boys club. Yeah, just dudes hanging out being being weird. Yeah. Punching each other in the nuts. Yeah. Like they they like <laughs> if I made like a little minute mistake, it would blow up and these fuckers made 
the same mistakes and if not worse all yeah, day. Yeah. And uh yeah, I did that for two and a half years and, uh, and then I just fucking left. Yeah. I I I then left it was college on, time. Yeah, college. I graduated. I left on my last semester. And I'm really happy with how I left that place because the yeah. owner fucking one of the owners was like, you you don't do anything. You don't make us any money. He talked really fast and stuttered a lot, which is super annoying. <laughs> Sounds and, like a uh, fun, fun character for a yeah, cartoon boss. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and um, and I, I did more than he said, but it would he would break it down to nothing. But when I left, I was like, all right, well, uh, come, let's go talk. And I was like, um, so I'm going to leave. And as soon as I said that, he got super happy. That was the happiest I've ever seen. Him. Yeah. And I was like, I, I can give you two weeks. I can leave today, whatever you yeah. want. And he's like, yeah, let me know. Well, I'll, I'll keep you working. I got this job I want you to do. And um, I didn't do terrible work, like he always said, but he wanted yeah. me. We got this big glass cut tabletop and it just had all these intricate cut angles and stuff. And we had to polish the edges and bevel them okay. by hand with little sanders. Yeah. And um, yeah, I did good at that. And he knew it. And yeah. Uh, he wanted me to do it and he said it was like a you know expensive job yeah. i started doing it and as i was doing it like i just like kept hearing him in my head like you don't fucking do shit ah. and i just fucking left <laughs> yeah. i did i did he came in there yeah. and i was just like yeah and i told him i was like hey um yeah i'm having trouble standing here <laughs> <laughs> fucking kind yeah. of fucking feeling my soul die inside of me yeah and then i just like there was this kid that worked there that he didn't give a fuck yeah he got paid shit and the dude loved him uh, just for that purpose. He made so much money off of him. Like the kid probably yeah. should be making twice as much as yeah. he makes. Yeah. Kind of. He has terrible work ethic. Yeah. But I just gave the sander to that kid. He fucks everything up. Like if it's not being done by a computer and him pressing buttons, it's going to get fucked up. Sure, sure. Because he's very <laughs> sloppy and careless. But I just handed it over to him. Yeah. Yeah, well, life goes on. So was that the midlife crisis, like this extent of working these jobs with assholes? Kind of. It yeah. started when I turned 30. Were you living in the funny cabin this whole time? No, I ended up in my apartment on Front Street. Mm. I was uh, renting from the owner of the strip club in town there. Oh. Yeah, you know who that is, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, he died and his son took over everything. And I don't think he's like worked much. Yeah. Maybe he like now does administrative stuff. From what I hear, he just like played video games and yeah, uh, had some recreational activities. Sure, sure. Um, but it was it was a shithole and the apartment. Yeah, yeah, it was nasty. There was like so down by the Buddha there. Yeah, they had a which U they own that place too. To yeah, the, yeah, they rent that out. Right, okay. and um. So above all the businesses, there are apartments and it's kind of like yeah. a horseshoe shape, kind of like a square horseshoe. And, um, yeah, that's the old spot. Everybody used to live around at that yeah, spot. Yeah. Everyone's been there. It's, mm -hmm. it's, uh, back when the muffin tin was there too. The village moped, I guess. Um, <laughs> but it was so bad there in one of the apartments, there was a young couple that had a baby and found black mold in their apartment yeah. and it affected their baby somehow. Yeah. That, like all of a sudden one day that place is just getting ripped apart. Yeah. And they got a lawsuit on him. Oh yeah. Yeah. And they, they did good. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. <clears throat> I yeah. should have had my apartment torn apart. Yeah. So they, they tore it apart. Why? Who tore it apart? The people that sued the guy? Um, or like they hired some mold company to come to in. To open it up and be like, Hey, there's black mold everywhere. And then yeah. at that point you and don't really out. have any like, recourse if you're the owner of the part apartment it's not like you can be like hey you fucking tore down my apartment like if there's black mold then it's just like well black mold supersedes yeah apartment damage i think those remember. mold people were actually hired by him to come in and fix it oh okay i i don't know the order of how this all happens ah, but i'm assuming that makes sense yeah i'm yeah. assuming they had someone look at it and then he had to pay to have it fixed yeah and then wow, got and sued. They sued him yeah, those places. Yeah, a bunch of people used to live in there. We used to, I used to have some fun nights in those apartments, though. Oh, it was so fucking crazy at first. Because it's like all drug addicts up <laughs> it there. It was all drug addicts and, and drunks just, and just yeah. people hooting and hollering. And like, yeah, it was pretty crazy, actually. Um, those and then the apartments, you know, the apartments off like Garfield have always been pretty crazy, too. Trade winds. Oh, that area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember 
that back in the day. Not, we're not as crazy as the other ones on Front Street. I remember one time I was at one of those apartments around Christmas time and we were hanging out and uh, the somebody knocked on the door and it was a bunch of like, I believe they were a Ukrainian family and they were out caroling for Christmas, like in the apartments. Is that is that the one by Meyer? Yeah, the one by yes, Meyer. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So we let them in and listen to their carols for a minute. It was pretty <clears throat> awesome. But it was so weird because it's like, oh, this is a shitty apartment complex. What are you doing You're running around with your caroling? But, you know, it's Christmas time. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah, I've heard some crazy shit about that place in the Ukraine. Kind of, yeah, yeah. Do a lot of, yeah, a lot of, uh, a lot of foreign folks live there or whatever. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't know where they go besides there because it's not like I see a whole ton of Ukrainian people around town. They're probably like getting they, government assistance or something. Yeah, they're probably at the MMA gym. Something. They're probably all MMA fighters. Yeah, probably. Or spies. They're probably all working all the jobs that like nobody else that lives here wants to work. <laughs> What's that? Everyone's got that job. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> That's true. You can serve tourists or you can fuck yeah, off. Yeah. Even all the tourist serving places, though, can't find anybody. Everybody's like, I don't. I think this whole town's going to shut down in the middle of the summer, dude, because nobody can find anybody to work for them. Everybody that does work these jobs is like losing their mind and nobody's like getting paid enough. Yeah. So I think a lot of restaurants are going to have to figure something out. They pay their people a little more, or like give them health insurance or something, dude. So nobody yeah. wants to, I don't know, nobody wants to work these like shitty jobs. It's like, well, it, and it, the hardest part is, and I, I hate saying just give them more. Yeah. And I hate saying don't give them more. It, it's a complex feeling for me, but they only get like some odd months of strong business where they could probably pay that. Yeah. And that's, that's a good point. What too. they make there probably gets them through the winter. But yeah. I th- I think it's a case by case because some people some of these businesses probably make like a shit ton of money. For sure, that's the thing. Like, like definitely, uh, yeah. Each business should should figure it out on on their own of what's best. But I just don't see like people just don't. I think with the internet, kids don't have to like do the shitty jobs they used to have to do. They can yeah, do all... stuff on like do editing online or fucking yeah, go they're all on crypto Fiverr millionaires and, yeah. doing <laughs> NFTs. Yeah, exactly. Dude. I even get what I need to flip burgers, yet. bro. Yeah. yeah. I think it's just like, it's like a picture uh, that exists online that you hypothetically own. It's like basically a new kind of hypothetical ownership, just like all this other bitcoins and everything is. It's like, it, it's another made up way to put value on things. Like here's a, Here's a picture online that anybody can look at, but you own it. You're the person that owns it. And apparently that's worth something, even though like anybody else can own it really, yeah. but like not really, I guess, in some in the new headspace of society. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, I don't know, man. Because I I don't watch the Paul brothers much. Yeah. I find them very fucking retarded. Who are the Paul brothers? Jake and Logan Paul. Oh, sure. Yeah, I've heard lots of... I don't know. I don't really know anything about him. He was in a fight, right? Yeah, he just fought Floyd Mayweather. I fucking feel like those Paul boys are paying off their opponents. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah. well, sure. I mean... They're so fucking rich. Really? They're that rich that they could could have enough money to pay Floyd Mayweather enough money to like not knock him out? Jake Paul is... uh, Paying just like fifty million dollars just for fights. Yeah, and he goes out. They make little small YouTube videos where they buy like millions of dollars of Pokemon card packs or something like that, and they're opening up just to find like a really expensive card. Yeah, or they'll buy an expensive card and find out it was fake, and they're just like they spend so much money. I don't watch a lot, but I catch bits of it. Most is reviews and interesting. Logan, yeah. Logan Paul's not too bad, but he's I've seen some pretty shameful shit from him too. Like yeah. I think he may be getting wiser and Jake Paul is just kinda like he's fucking stupid as fuck and he's kinda trying to rock like a wrestler heel yeah. thing right oh, now okay. where he's the bad guy and he just does a and it's working for him. It's, yeah. He, yeah. People say he's a genius for doing it, but he's just fucking stupid and he's found <laughs> his niche. That's it. He's a fucking retard. Yeah. 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 I, well, so 
these fellows are like YouTube guys. Yeah. <laughs> right. Like yeah. they have YouTube channels yep. and they do funny things like what did, and they just kind of do whatever things. Yeah. What they, did they just, just find little hacks of society to, to kind of like find viral things? Is that what they what's their main idea for their lives? Like what's the are they trying to hack the Internet to make money? Is that they hacked? Are they just having fun? They just hacked. hacked okay, life. okay. Um, they get all their money from YouTube views, mm-hmm. and I've seen reviews and breakdowns of them, and it was like they became popular. Long Logan is the oldest. He became popular, started making money, and his little brother was riding his coattails. Yeah, and his little brother, when he was like a little teenager, had like a mansion. Okay. Yeah. from YouTube and YouTube money. Yeah. And they they're they're cashing in on the fucking idiocracy of America right sure. now. Sure. Um they found the dumber the shit they did, the more views, the more money. Yeah. And Jake Paul really fucking rocked that. They yeah. did like he he's abused friends and put them in very dangerous situations. Really, so like fucked up stuff, not like jackass kind of shit, it but kind like, of. Well, they did the same thing. They did the same thing. I feel like they, they did it cooler. for the art form, though. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I feel like they did it for like the culture of skateboarding and kind of like that whole vibe, as opposed to just like hacking the internet to make money. Yes, they. I guess you could say they made an art out of it. Yeah, but there's no art with the Pauls. Okay, yeah. and um, like one video there. There was a girl, he had his girlfriend go sunbathe out in the yard or something and put her in a weird spot. And I feel like it was kind of set up because she yeah. laid between basically two dirt ramps. Yeah. And they jumped a giant like buggy over her. <laughs> and she was acting, she's got to be the dumbest she was, fucking girl. Yeah, she was acting like she didn't know what was going to yeah, happen. Yeah, and was like seriously like, yeah, like what are you? It. Yeah. And I was confused. I was like, how did she not get there? Yeah. She was just that Her slow getting in the head. pissed is like part of the. The whole the craziness yeah. of it, I guess, huh? Yeah, I guess so. Like they and have to have. They that. just got views and bites about it, and it's just like, yeah, holy fuck, yeah. How what are we what are we doing, Clint Weiner? I don't know, doing? man. I mean, it just doesn't sound like fun, though. No, it like, doesn't. But the figuring out rich, how to like manipulate like twelve year olds to yeah. fucking click on your shit. <laughs> like, I know. Like, I don't know, man. Like I, I feel like there's a way to do it that's more organic and fun and uh you know not to say that they're not putting a lot of work into this shit though i mean regardless of how how stupid i I think it is or we think it is it's still a lot of work like editing and putting together all of those videos and i I don't think they do shit i don't think (laughs) they do they probably hire people to do it yeah Yeah. there's these yeah jake paul he probably has someone paid to wipe his ass. Like I don't yeah. think he can do anything on his own. Like his haircut's all fucked up. This guy. He's dumb as shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh it's it's just insane. But you know, kudos to them. They found their niche and they yeah. milked it. I can't believe the the Logan Paul fellow got in the ring with Mayweather. Like how does it seems just like an odd thing to like Mayweather is a serious fighting man like a serious like the, cha- yeah. the fucking world champion of not not getting hit at the very least but one of the best boxers in in the world forever so like how does he put himself in a situation where he's with this dorky kid that's you know well Logan Paul is a f- kind of a fucking beast oh really yeah he's tall okay. he's kind of jacked yeah um, he. Logan, with he, like from what I understand, he used he kind of got famous because he was like pushing himself to do new things. Yeah, but he'd also oh. do stupid shit. Okay, sure, sure. So like, he's like, yeah, like getting in the ring with whoever. Yeah, fucking. like there was a video where they paid to become bounty hunters for today for a day and collected yeah. a bounty on someone, like caught someone, chased him down. I don't know <laughs> how much of it was real. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I'm. I'm going to tell you something fucking weird, though. I worked at a client's house, and I'm walking downstairs to get where I need to go, and this dude has pictures of Logan Paul Oh boy! all over his wall. Like, oh, boy. See, yeah. and I, don't, that's, I have that feeling, too. I bet the fans of a lot of these people are not who 
we would think the fans are maybe too. Maybe it's like jerking off dudes or like old sad ladies. These, this was almost family relation kind of photos. Oh, you think he's is related to him? Mm, I don't know. Maybe huh. I don't. I didn't ask. You I think was, Logan Paul's uncle lives here or his dad or this something. This dude's rich as fuck. Whoever it was. Really? Yeah. And huh. Well, you know, that's not far fetched. I mean, a lot of fucking rich people that we don't know live live up here. I think that's. It's pretty common. Uh, but, I mean, there could be a million reasons why. Maybe yeah. he, he works for his network or something. Yeah. They work together. Maybe mm-hmm. it's his lawyer. Maybe it's his accountant. Sure, there but some kind reasons. of Logan Paul. Do you think we could get him on the podcast? I forgot his name. <laughs> no, I mean Logan Paul. Oh, Logan Paul. Probably not. <laughs> Probably not. He's... Yeah. I He seems like he's pretty shitty to up-and-comers. Like, yeah. I've seen videos oh. where someone argues with him, and his, like, his winning argument is like... I'm up here. You're fucking down here. You only yeah. got 20 views, motherfucker. Yeah, that's not fun. Come on, no. Logan. We got 40 views, bro. Yeah, no, we hit, we hit 50. <laughs> We're fucking coming for you, Logan. Um, what about this fellow Casey Neistat? I saw an interview with him. He seemed like a nice guy. He's a YouTube I, guy. Have you ever heard of him? Never heard of him. I watched a video and he was snowboarding around New York. I think he does a lot of viral video stuff, but he seems like a genuinely nice fellow. Okay. So maybe he'll come on the podcast. Not many. Knee problems? Yeah. It it wants stick to out. Pop you can stick out the uh the leg uh the leg thing if you want. Oh, I got a little I got yeah, a leg got thing a little right dog, here. Dog, dog rest. Yeah, we should probably do like get the camera out next time, dude, and at least like try to shoot. Throw my beard back first. I don't like this. <laughs> <laughs> I look so fucked up right now. <laughs> you got a little, like Fred Flintstone vibe. I like it though. Fucking murderous Fred Flintstone vibe. Like I, I went to trim my beard and I was like, "Come on, dude. Yeah, it can't be that bad. Let's let's have a peek what? at what's up yeah. there." Yeah. And I was cutting off just the, like the hair was just like rolling off my face when I did it with the trimmer, just like mm-hmm. the, the big long chunks. And when I was done, I was like, "That was the dumbest thing you've done in forever." I had that beard going for like seven years. Wow. You haven't yeah. shaved your beard in seven years. I trimmed it, but never shaved it. Yeah, yeah, not completely. That's why I got all this acne going on. I don't really see the acne, but I, you have a hiding night. behind the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> you have a good five o'clock shadow, though. Your beard will be back in no time. Yeah, I gotta get this fucking pelican's beard, pelican What's go- a, giblet. Oh, beard. that. Oh, sure, dude. Yeah. I mean, that's just part My of the. Double chin. That's part of the game, dude. Yeah. Just fucking give that one up to the the gods of of gravity, I guess. Yeah, dude, that's when I got my driver's license taking taken. They, <clears throat> I swear to God, the last time I got my driver's license taken, they moved the camera like up, right? I think I might have talked about this already on the so, podcast. No, no, I don't think you did. <laughs> but like in Sun's Bay when I got it taken like six years ago or whatever, they were like move the camera the direct for how high you, how tall you are, right? But the one in Traverse City, dude, it's like down three feet high. So I got to look down at the camera. Oh, so really? old fucking old like, what do you call it? Old like sausage neck. Get all the, all the sausage rolls on the neck. And then I got a really? mustache in my driver's license too because I was thought I was real funny. So I went there and I got a fucking this mustache Where sausage this neck driver's license picture. I don't you know, still it's down in the it? car. I, oh. It's my license now, dude. <laughs> maybe you did show me i yeah. don't remember though i'm starting yeah. to f- it's starting to ring a bell yeah it's not too bad but the whole thing was pretty depressing yeah um i just uh showed some more friends uh an episode of this last night and i was like yeah. don't let your fucking kids listen to this. <laughs> i haven't really listened to it i hope it's not too bad no it's not too bad there's yeah. probably moments of shame for me because I never I, think I don't filter. Yeah, you know, I, there's definitely probably moments of shame too for me. But hopefully, if we just keep doing them, it'll all even out. Yeah, and our actual yeah. thoughts will uh, will 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 be known, and but then we won't seem like total the, jerks. Yeah, and these moments of shame could be funny to someone else. Like, because truly, well, it's you know, it, you gotta be. Uh, Fucking what's it called, dude? You gotta be open or put yourself out there, man. Yeah, there's vulnerable. You gotta be vulnerable. That's what the listeners want. It's what they told expose me. Expose yourself. Yeah, you gotta expose yourself. You gotta expose yourself. 
There's one I listen to called Come Town. Dude. So that's Have hilarious. That? Yeah, that guy's hilarious. Yeah, they're so vulgar, though. <laughs> so vulgar. Really? Yeah. I haven't listened to the podcast. I saw him on another podcast and I was like, oh, this seems awesome. And it also made me think, like, we should name our podcast something <laughs> super stupid, too. Because then it's like, uh, yeah, whatever. I just thought it was funny. But, but oh, they are extreme. There's three dudes yeah. Adam, Nick, and Stav. And they, they say, like, I don't know how they're not canceled. Yeah. Maybe they don't have enough viewers, but it's funny as shit. I think they're pretty I think they're pretty popular, man. I think, you know, if you just play it right, like you can just override all that shit. Own it. I think you yeah. own it. Yeah, for sure. Because mm-hmm. like one of them is actually gay and they oh, talk well, about that helps, it a lot. Dude. Yeah. yeah, that helps. Um Yeah, we need uh we need some kind of an LGBT person to kind of Nah, up in here. All right. We're doing all right. <laughs> we even it <laughs> I'm, out. I'm asexual. Oh, so. oh, okay. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. I'm uh, um I'm sure I have a lot of problems, undiagnosed issues, uh lots of st- yeah, strange things that I've done. Um we'll save all of them. <laughs> yeah. We'll, we'll save. We'll We don't want to There's really no category for these these particular issues. Yes. Of ours. Maybe someday there will be and we can identify with some certain type of weirdo. I don't weirdo. want to identify with anything. No, <laughs> no I'm good. <laughs> I'll just be me and roll with it. All right. Fair um, enough. We won't have an identity club. Yeah. We, but yeah. Uh, what were we talking about, though? Come totally Town. Forgot. Come Town. That's yeah. right. Uh, those guys seem great. And uh, yeah. What, what, what got us there? I don't know. I don't remember. I also listen yeah. to me, my brother, my brother, and me. That's a pretty fun one. Who's that? They're my brothers and their brothers. They're all brothers, three brothers, and it's very just like off the wall the whole time. It's it's not raunchy. It's very kind of clean and goofy, but uh, it's just very silly. Lots of silliness. Okay, um, I think yeah, I may have, to, have heard of this. You have to this. listen to it. It's kind of hard to explain, but it's just kids that know each other really well, kind of just fucking chatting and and messing around a lot yeah having a good old good old time you know some boys (laughs) having a good good time time. good time with the boys yeah Um, speaking of boys (laughs) speaking of boys (laughs) i did a little research yeah but it's it's too much like i wanted to talk about prophet preachers a bit and we can do that a little but if we like i don't know maybe we could dedicate a series to it because it gets deep it gets fucked up I think we should dedicate a series to it. Let's go through kind of the bullet points, though. The So, fuck, most people know what prophet preachers are. Last night I was talking to my buddy about it. He never really heard prophet preacher before, that phrase. That term. Specifically. Yeah. And <clears throat> these are pastors who open mega churches and do like little television public access things where they ask for your money. And these mega churches can house up to like, not house, they can seat thousands, maybe up to 30,000 people or more. Like, it's basically a football stadium. Yeah. And they take your money pretty much. They, they're, there's so many methods to it, but basically these dudes say they are the, their body is the living word of God. Yeah. Like they twist religion hard. Yeah. And then they're like, they get people who don't know any better. And I and I'm gonna sound like a dick, but these are not smart people. Yeah. And they say, You give and you shall receive. Yeah. And they come up with all they, they take verses from the Bibles and twist it to say, Give me money. Yeah. And um there's some there's big three there's the big three I don't like, and that's Benny Hinn, uh Kenneth Copeland. And David Popoff. They've been around for a long time doing this. Kenneth Copeland is now the richest pastor or cult leader, whatever you want to call him. To date, he has $300 million net worth. Jesus. He's been doing this since 1967. He's he's deep in this. Is and he the dude when they asked him about the private jet? And oh, the got, demons he, on the tube? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's him. That's, that's him. Kenneth okay. Copeland. Okay. The fucking piece of shit. Yeah, like, he seems like a scary fellow. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, I, and I frequently watch YouTube yeah. videos about these dudes and the yeah. shit they say, it's like 
some of it that comes out of their mouth, you would figure that like someone who was following would be like, oh, that did it for me. Yeah. I'm out. Yeah. Very obvious that it's like the uh, you really have to be deep and believing in these people. Yeah. To let that shit slide, huh? Or a lot of vulnerable people out there like that are just looking for something to believe in or some maybe something to dedicate to this. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And I went to Catholic school for a grade and CCD. We are the living word of God. Give us your money. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, I got a few tricks. I could get some people's, get some people's money. That's, yeah. What a horrible fucking thing to do. Okay, so we got the, the what was the first guy? Benny Hill. Benny Hinn. Benny, Benny Hinn. Hill was an old British comedy. Right. Yeah, run around real fast. He's always like groping chicks. Oh yeah. yeah. I guess that's who didn't do a little groping back in the day, you know. <laughs> back in the seventies and eighties, it was just that's how everybody you did your something hands off. fucked up. Everybody was either racist or like yeah. grabbing ass or like sticking their dick in something. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking There's of a lot of problems, shit, man. Pastors. I wonder what this stuff in the future that we do that's going to be like. Oh, probably shouldn't have done that one. Yeah, things don't age well. But <laughs> um, yeah, Benny Hinn. Uh, he, I hate his fucking hairdo. Okay, that's he, fun. Tell me more about that he's first off. An Israeli pastor, okay. televangelist. Okay. And him and Popoff got both got busted because they were telling their followers that they could heal them. You know, they were so empowered and imbued yeah. by God that yeah, so. they could heal them. And Benny would bring people up on stage, and he was actually very rough with them. Like some yeah. woman had like spinal something. He like grabbed her neck and like fucking pushed her on the ground yeah and uh then he kind of chilled i think something happened and he chilled yeah he's like maybe i shouldn't do my fake fucking medicine insanity on people did it or like not be as fucking as tough on them so they don't see the shit out of me he then started taking his coat and he'd just like walk up to people and waving in front of him be like he'd speak gibberish and say take it Take this, take it, the word of God, take yeah. it. And they'd be like, Ooh, and fall over yeah. and fake faint. Yeah. And um, I actually watched an interview with a dude that worked for him and had to fake faint. Oh, he was like the ringer or whatever. Yeah, like the just, plant just stage kinda. actor, yeah. basically. Yeah. Because he Benny Hinn had people that would hold the the followers, like his his crew would hold them. And then when he waved, his crew intentionally fell too. Like they yeah, were hit sure, by the power of sure, God. Sure, 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 sure. So it's this power of you're seeing other people do it. You get swept up in it all of oh, a sudden. Yeah. Like that's very easy to do. I mean, that's like a a, a scientifically experimented study uh, that you know the power of uh, other people doing things. The power of like when you're in a situation where uh, people are doing weird shit. Well, they're just following the. Yeah. You know, like in war, or like whatever, where, where it's just like everybody's doing this fucked up shit. And it's like, well, ah, that's what we're doing. It's you know? not, that's so, what we do. Yeah. Or just the, the or mob mentality. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. It's yeah. like the power of of uh, of mob oh, yeah. mentality. World war two. Yeah. <laughs> it's mob yeah. mentality there in Germany. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, there was like a video of Benny Hinn just walking up to the whole audience and just waves his coat at them, speaks gibberish and like. 40 people just fall backwards like they've just been hit with the power of God. Yeah. And uh, another bad one who did this was David Popoff, and he got busted hard. Um, someone came to one of his uh, megachurch events with an RF. This was like in the 80s or 90s, too. Yeah. And they brought uh, basically an RF microphone device where they could pick up radio frequencies and... What David Popoff was doing, he had his wife in his earpiece. He had an earpiece back mm-hmm. then. And she'd be like, so people came into the mega church, wrote their problems, their names, all their info on it. And I'm shocked they never found this fucking like peculiar at all that he would be reading off that same exact card info like God was talking to him. Yeah. And you figured they'd be like, I just wrote that on a card. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah, right. And um and they they got pop off good. Um they busted him for that and then I think they sent fake people faking uh illness to him and he said they healed him and then they were like 
uh, how did you heal them if they weren't sick? Wouldn't you know this? Like they call them out on mm. that. And I think the same thing happened with Benny Hinn. Who, who bust these people? Like he's so, like how? So it's like, yeah, you didn't heal them because they weren't sick, but he's obviously not healing anybody. Like is the FBI like sending in a somebody that's like, see, he's not actually healing people. <laughs> like it's weird. They have to set that precedent. Before they uh they can bust him, but I guess it's at least it's uh like evidence, like hard evidence. Yeah. So this that dude's he's intentionally name... trying to like fuck with people. So there was a dude in the I think late seventies, early eighties, sounded like him, but yeah. that wasn't the right guy. James Randy, James Randy, R A N D I. Um, he went around exposing everyone. Yeah. And cool. there was this really terrible one. There was this cracker yeah, ass dude. That'd be a dude. sweet college comic book or something like the, the expose. Yeah. Randy <laughs> the <dude>. expo- <laughs> <laughs> He's like a vampire slayer, but he just busts fake people. Yeah. There was this really bad guy that claimed he had like telekinesis back in the day. His name was like Hydric, H-Y-D-R-I-C-K. And he had this fucked up bull cut. Yeah. A mustache, and he wore like Classic these look. Shaolin robes almost, Oof. but they were like silky and jazzy. Mm, yeah. And, um, he was putting down phone books and just pushing his hands over them, and a page would turn. Uh-huh. And James Randi was like, Hold on, I'm going to put some little styrofoam popcorn around you here. Now, if you have true telekinesis, you can move this page without moving anything else. Yeah. And the dude, it was hilarious. He's sitting there like, thinking real hard and he's like I-, I can't do it all the all the star from popcorn is creating like an electromagnetic field that i can't deal with right now <laughs> and james randy would be like well as a matter of fact you're a lying piece of shit <laughs> <laughs> you're a phony get the fuck out of here yeah james randy yeah i love that dude he did he had like tv specials where yeah, he bust cool. People. cool yeah cool and i think he used to be an illusionist yeah so he kind of knows a little bit of the game and it's, uh and like how those people do their tricks. Yeah. yeah, that should be a comic book. And James Randi could be, he could be like an actual vampire and he's angry because all these other people are like fake being fake vampires. And he's like, <laughs> you don't have real fucking vampire powers. Fake ass vampire. Yeah, you, know, you can't really take advantage of people <laughs> like I can. That'd be an interest, interesting comic book. Um, yeah. But yeah, yeah, there, there was a ton of that shit going on in the late 70s, 80s. Yeah, it was big time was like, for it. I've got the sun child power. Seems like a lot. Of, yeah, there's a lot of weird shit on TV too. Just like a lot of weird ass late night. Yeah. Television. Yeah. That uh, may where have been you could the call best, in though. numbers. Yeah. Right. A lot of call in stuff. Remember you call in like the Cleo or you could call in. Oh, some, call me you know, Cleo. Sexy ladies you can call. She got fucking busted. Cleo too. did get busted, right? Yeah. Yep. She was, How does that though? Because I mean, isn't it under the guise of like, like, what does she do? What did she get busted for? So essentially, she was screwing over people that called in. Um, I don't know if she had hired help or anything for the phone lines, but what how she set it up was you got the first some odd minutes were free, mm-hmm. and then after that it was like five dollars a minute. Yeah, she'd put them on fucking hold. Ah, okay, so that's just bad business practice. Yeah. You can't do that. Yeah, I, th- yeah. It, I think it was ethical shit she got in trouble she's already scamming everybody and then you got to put them on hold too come on exactly well that's the only greedy there cleo yeah that was the big scam there holy shit yeah thank god we don't have pay phones anymore yeah i know those are not that that those are interesting times but i remember as a kid actually Uh huh i kind of miss them sometimes yeah they're kind of cool i like the booths they're so heavy yes um when i used to live downstate there was like phone booths almost on every corner and there was yeah. one specifically in front of a party store and i always went there because there was always like adult phone line clippings on yeah, the ground and that's weird where shit. people met their yeah. drug dealers and that's stuff where like the that. weirdest shit was yeah, in that cool phone booth was. and i always went and uh, you knew that you you knew as a child even that yeah that's where the fun was and if i found like number <laughs> clippings on the ground i'd call them and then like oh, dude There'd be a lady like, hey, big You would one. call them? Oh, yeah, cool. Yeah, because you could dial the 1-800 number and get Ooh, taken to right. a menu. That's right. Oh, yeah. yeah. I used to do that, too. I forgot about that, yeah. dude. Yeah. And, like, I'd dial it, and then as soon as I got the voicemail, I thought it was, like, 
right charging or yeah oh okay yeah and i was like oh fuck and hung up i was like oh wow i did it (laughs) a woman talked dirty to me (laughs) yeah (laughs) i'm a man now i'm a man now i heard a woman talk dirty have we been doing over an hour already we're at 49 minutes okay i thought it said an hour it does once again i brought this up before i don't know why logic starts its clock in an hour um but it does and it bothers me Fair enough. So, it makes whatever. me feel like we're accomplishing, though. Yeah. I don't know. I would rather it just told me the truth, you know? Yeah. <laughs> kind of like YouTube. Is it? Yeah, right? Everybody's really lie to us. All these machines. I don't know why they're trying to manipulate us so yeah. much. And then... Uh, um, telephone booths. Yes. Yeah. Lady materials. Yeah. It was... It was uh, uh, you know, I was, when I was, I was in San Francisco and I was like... 11 or 12 or something and they had all of these uh, just visiting with my parents and they had all of these like newsstand type things for with that were free but they were all like sexy porno magazines like they were like advertisements like 15 pages of like sexy advertisements yeah you know? but they had like butts on them and stuff yep it's pretty sexy cool butts. and actually i think i remember seeing one that was like real like fucked up like really you know gay bondage stuff kind of thing really? and it's like what the fuck is going on in this town my little 12 year old mind that's crazy yeah just out there in the world yeah, san francisco probably had some interesting stuff to find yeah it's where that's the land of open-minded open-mindedness <laughs> <laughs> have you ever been there no i've never been to cali yeah oh really yeah uh, I've, I've i don't know like I had friends that were all about it growing up, and it was sure. like taking a big trip, big road trip out to California. Yeah, but they talked it up so much, it kind of turned me off. <laughs> yeah, you're. Right. Like, what the fuck yeah, is it's, it's like, probably very care. beautiful and nice. Oh, there. it's gorgeous yeah. out there. I mean, it was. You kind of missed it. <laughs> yeah, it was. I, no, it still I did is. Miss it. It's still very beautiful out there. Yeah. Um, and now there's like, I mean, it's pretty easy to to get out there by plane you know it's a pretty quick flight we got like a direct flight you know what you should do brian we have direct flights to phoenix now you should go to fly to phoenix and I've rent been a, there rent a car you have been to phoenix phoenix is great but rent a car and then, <laughs> have you been around arizona at all yeah i went yeah uh, i helped rod move back from there yeah and uh stayed in the mexican hood for a night or Ooh, two nice nice and uh in phoenix markets yeah it yeah was, i was gonna say you should drive to to california from from phoenix and for some reason i didn't want you to t- i wanted you to take a direct flight <laughs> i didn't want you to have to get off and get on another plane so this <laughs> this is my reasoning for your vacation yeah I'm planning i for feel you. like if i went to cali i'd want to drive the whole way the whole way that's probably the way that's yeah. the way to do it because i love mm-hmm. seeing the country Nebraska the middle sucks. of the country is per- missouri is like what the fuck I bet there's some cool spots, but just along the the highway. Um, but whatever. Cool when I, we passed really? through the Ozarks. Yeah, that's cool. That's and cool. I saw St. Louis. I saw the big. Yeah, theme St. Louis is a mess. Um, but the the Ozarks were very beautiful. I really want to go check them out because yeah. it looked like here, but times a thousand. You could see there was just millions of little two tracks yeah. off in the woods. Yeah. Probably some fun. That up sounds shit like a fun there, area. But yeah, um, I've been there. I'll have to go there. Anyway, sorry, Mister. I guess that's a cool spot that Brian knows about. I don't know about. It. <laughs> <But>. <laughs> it's only my opinion. It's only my opinion. Um, um, I mean, honestly, there's little cool spots, especially nowadays with the internet and stuff. There's a lot of cool little towns everywhere. You know, yeah, a lot of cool spots to to stop that aren't as podunk as they were even like ten years ago. You know, now everybody knows like what a burrito is and stuff yeah fucking internet i know it's kind of lame all the hikes are figured out too like especially around here all the fucking spots all the beach spots yeah all the secret hikes are all apps for that yeah exactly it's just there we go let me take my motor my electric bike out there and fucking go rip around my my least favorite drive across the country is illinois nebraska and idaho i think it is yeah it's just flat fucking cornfields the whole yeah. damn way. It's all up and down the middle of the country. It is, there's just like that day and a half at least of <clears throat> flatness. Yeah. But that that was what was nice when getting out to like 
Well, Missouri had the hills and mountains, but, well, big hills, I guess. I didn't see actual mountains. To us, maybe it's a mountain, but um, Oklahoma was okay. Texas was yeah. just fucking death waste. A lot of, a lot of Colorado kind of sucks, too. Like yeah. Besides the mountains. We're just saying fuck everybody. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't mean all of Texas is a death waste. I've yeah. really got to be careful. But like. Yeah, for uh, sure. A came, lot of Michigan sucks too. Like. Yeah. You know, south. Yeah. yeah. South here. But I came in through North Texas, Amarillo, and we went west to Lubbock with materials for work. And like if we ran out of gas in West Texas, we would have been fucked. Oh, dude, we for went sure. Hours without a gas station. Yeah. Yeah. In towns that were shut down, I mean, th- it looked like they shot could have shot Mad Max there. Yeah, and the one town, the sheriff's department had a plaque on the front of the building, a placard that was OSB board spray painted black, and then white spray paint that said Sheriff's Office. Yeah, and I was like, did the bank <laughs> robbers fucking? Take over the town? <laughs> <clears throat> Uh yeah, Nebraska's like that, like that too. Or you're just—it's scary, dude. And it gets cold too. Like it starts to get dark out, and it's if you're not if it's not summertime, it's gonna be cold out there. And if you something would happen, like you could just be out there for God knows how long, yeah, dude, with yeah. no idea of really like what to do. You know, so sometimes your cell phone doesn't work. A lot of the times, holy shit, yeah, bring a hot spot for whatever service you don't have on your phone, yeah, just in case, yeah, right. <laughs> it's dangerous, but nonetheless, people used to do this all the time on yeah. fucking like Model T's. Yeah, that that's when people were tougher, and yeah, more interesting, were and it sounds like it'd be more fun. It'd be yeah, it'd be like, I mean, that's like life, I guess. At that point, you're just like, hey, we're this is gonna be what we do for the next year is go to. California or Model T. I bet it took like a month on the Model a couple months. You probably had to dig yourself out of some ruts too. Like when did Route 66 get completed? Like the re Route 66? I don't know, the original one. Oh, the original one? The Model oh, T final. version where that was all dirt. I don't even know anything about it. You know, my brother knows a ton about Route 66. He's no, like a Route 66 historian, basically. Really? So you'd be able to tell us. We'll have him sometimes talk about John Paul and Route 66. Yeah. Wait, so is he like heavy into the John Paul stuff? Oh, he loves John Paul. So That's what I think on our first episode I was listening to some of it. And that, was okay. a big, that was a big topic in it. Yeah, okay. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, he's still into the JP. Oh, but. JP's probably the best Pope ever. Yeah. JP2. JP2. <laughs> JP2. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, back on the preachers though there was one guy he has an office here in michigan i may have talked about him on a prior episode yeah i can't remember did i Uh, i think you might have like one of the first couple i don't know if we released the one that you talked about it okay that's good let's not release that one okay Um, (laughs) david e taylor so this dude i I became obsessed with him because he has an office downstate in michigan yeah jmmi studios joshua ministry media uh, Joshua Media Ministry, something like that, international. And this dude is a straight up cult leader. His YouTube videos are crazy. He's got, there's uh, stories of a person missing from his headquarters. He abuses, they abuse people that work there. I don't think they pay them at all. They deprive them of sleep and uh, they play fucked up head games. Yeah. Um, But I, I got really into this. I wanted to do like a, uh, serious podcast about this yeah and i started looking around looking around i found his deposition video and i wanted to get in contact with the lady talking to him in that video because she was ripping him a new asshole yeah this is all in michigan i think he's mainly based out of missouri he's so rich he's got offices everywhere and um he i pursued further and then i found a facebook group dedicated to you know against him and I got in contact with them, and I was talking with Vicky Yoey. That's his ex-girlfriend who mm-hmm. was involved with a federal case against him, and I didn't know it. And I was like, you know, I want to do a podcast about this. I was wondering if I could talk with someone. They were like, well, we want to hear your podcast first. I mean, they're still religious, so 
I would probably not bother them again because yeah. once they hear us, they'll be like, yeah, probably not, dude. <laughs> Maybe I can get yeah. a nice quote. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, it was Vicky Yoey that was okay. talking to me, and uh, I told him I'd get back to him, and it's been almost two years now, and I have not gotten back to him. Yeah. But I feel bad. I should have been like, you know, let's close this. But I kind of left it open and yeah. responsibly didn't call him back. But like I said, they probably would not have dug this. But... um. Yeah, after talking with her and looking looking into more stuff involving her, I really backed out of this because from what I'm hearing, he's got FBI agents that are members of his cult. Yeah. Police, like, he's set up. Yeah. But he's a fucking nutcase. He went around, like, he, he does post, what would you call it? Post prophecies on things, like... 9-11 happened. Yeah. Next day or whatever, he's out saying he was trying to warn the world of 9-11. Yeah. He said he drove from Detroit to New York warning everyone of 9-11. I have... No one's fucking, you know... Yeah, there's no... Validated this. Yeah, yeah. Um, then he also does, like, when big sex ring... Or sex trafficking rings get busted, he says he's the reason it happened. Sure. Like he, yeah. Sure, he just takes credit just for stuff. Buy this shit. Yeah. But um, yeah. There's 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 a lot of interesting stuff to him, and it's insane. He gets away with what he does because he takes people's money. He finds old rich people that are dying, and he just cons them out of their money. And their families take him to court and lose. Yeah. Yeah. He he makes a shit ton of money, and his videos are insane because he's like very aggressive, fire and brimstone. Yeah. And uh. He says stuff like, God wants me to be rich. Yeah. Give me your money. And all those pastors do that. There yeah, was for one, sure. uh, Creflo Dollar, and another dude. These are African American pastors. And they get collect everyone's money, throw it up on the stage, and dance on it, <laughs> saying they're anointing the money. And they're like, Give me that money. Give me that money. Oh, Give me dude. that money. Yeah. They just keep saying, yeah. Give me that money and saying oh, they're, it's fuck, fucking disgusting. Man. Yeah. Um, Taylor's a little bit more professional than that. Though. Okay. He just kind of like angry is like he has like FBI guys on his payroll. It seems well, like he must not on payroll in his or in his, in his okay yeah, yeah. his cult I'll say, but it's it's insane. He's he's been brought to court several times for abuse of his children. Um, he slept with like fifty women, married women of his flock. Yeah. So and, it's like a straight up cult leader guy. Yeah, it's straight up cult. A lot of these guys sound like straight up cult leader guys, but they're just doing it in a in a money based way. Like it's it's why do you yeah, what do you think it is? Like why do these people keep being able to move forward? Just like religious belief. Because there's a lot of stupid people. Yeah, just, that's what it is. <laughs> And that's yeah. the, I mean, look at the country today. I sure. mean, it's no one's using their fucking brains. Yeah. It's all stupid. It's idiocracy now. Yeah. I hate to say it. And if I offended some of you, I'm sorry, but maybe you weren't. Maybe well, you there's were. a lot of people in the world. There's more and more people. So I guess the more and more stupid people keep, there's more and more of them, too. Yeah. Well, I mean, the, idiocracy broke it down very good with the Cleavons. Yeah. I don't remember, remember what's the, the Cleavons. No, it's the Cleavons. So, Oh, okay, right. When like the yeah, smart people don't have kids, yeah, kind of a thing. That's yeah. very true. Yeah, yes, that is why I don't have kids because I'm super <laughs> smart. <laughs> yeah, but I I think there's something very true to that. Yeah, it's that, like that does make sense. The dumber keep fucking and making more dumber. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah evolutionarily, like I don't know if that. Well, we'll keep going. There's nothing to stop. There's nothing killing any of these people on purpose, though. So, stupidity. There, yeah, Natural yeah, that's selection. true. That's true. So then that, yeah, that'll end that. But yeah. Do you? My is your family on uh, the cusp of extinction? Yeah. What if you? Yeah. If you don't have I any am, children, you're the I last of them. Yep. Me too. I think. <laughs> well, you sort got your of. brother. Yeah, my brother, but he's not. I mean, no. He's gonna have to find a very. A, good catholic woman although i heard he was at the elks club with a lady the other day oh shit stagging it <laughs> aaron up. is laundry <laughs> <laughs> Aaron is laundry. yeah um so yeah you know he'll, he'll probably he could shack yeah for sure he could shack up and fucking start popping is him out you know or younger? he's younger he's four years younger than me okay 
but yeah, currently I'm the one with the most chance at this point. Yeah. With I, I have a bunch of cousins too, and like, yeah, I'm the only one, dude. I'm the only I one have freaking. no chance. I'm talking to Stacy right now, but we're not really like Stacy. What's up, yeah. Stacy? Yeah, Stacy. What's up, girl? <laughs> yeah, that's that girl I met online. I told you about. Yeah, you guys still chatting? Yeah. Um, but we're both not huge on the kid idea, but that could change. That's cool. We though. gotta meet in person first. Though. Yeah, I mean, dude, you gotta meet Stacy. I know. We've been talking for so goddamn long. She's from Appalachia or South Carolina, or something like that. Basically, Buckley. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah <clears throat> um yeah it's all that but i don't i mean i'm at the age where i'm almost 40 it's like do i really want to have a fucking kid at 40 I know. i'll never well, retire early they're easy i feel like they were easy kids yeah fuck that <laughs> yeah fuck no no oh you just gotta like water them and fucking play with them i don't know like <laughs> I have lots of friends with kids and I'm very yeah. close with them all. And it's yeah, like, you kind of do you kind of, yeah, you you have a lot of, you're yeah. friends with all your friends' kids. Yeah. 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 Uh, so you I have got, a lot of kids in your life anyway. Yeah. There's Sanborn, yeah. Fulls, Duboards, no shit. Clugs, and reeling off the names. Yeah. Uncle Brian over here. Yeah. I've got like 20 fake nieces and nephews yeah. probably. So that's pretty impressive two real ones <laughs> squad yeah yeah and i've i've been around them a lot and it's like it's not easy and you know everyone's got opinions on that shit but it's like i don't know i don't like my family's genetics puberty yeah he's a bitch for us yeah um, what do you say puberty was a bitch oh yeah yeah it's so hard it's like they can't test for schizophrenia on teenagers because puberty and schizophrenia it's display the same, the same exact <laughs> symptoms. It's pretty funny, dude. And that's very real. Uh, yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. 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 Yeah, teen I had some rough teenage years as well. I think anybody that's like into like punk rock and stuff like that or yeah. like skateboarding and all that shit, it's usually <clears> like <throat> yeah, some kind of like crazy mood issues yeah i did i guess i was t- trying so hard to identify somewhere i didn't focus on life itself yeah that's an that's an interesting way yeah. to say it yeah huh. i should have i know uh, everyone was like oh you gotta think about the future and like i was like fuck that i'll survive i always had no clue how i would serve like i was just like i don't i mean i i, I didn't have I didn't think that I wouldn't, but I was always like, I have no idea how I'm going to like buy a computer one day or like how I'm going to like, I'm supposed to have health. I mean, I still don't have health insurance really, but, but yeah, or just how all these adult things, like uh, as a kid, I was like, I don't know how the, any of this is going to work. I just figured it was all just going to work. Yeah. Which that's was good. very poor planning. That, yeah. <laughs> that's kind of what I figured like, too. Yeah. And I always saw my dad, like he worked, he had two jobs Yeah, and he was just always working. He never seemed happy. He never really hung out. Like we did stuff sometimes, but like it was for like a half hour. We went camping a couple times at yeah. like a shitty KOA campground downstate. Um, but it just never seemed like he was happy. Yeah. Yeah. And he was always just working all the time. And I was like, I don't want to fucking be that. Yeah. That was always kind of the main thing. I mean, my dad got to figure something work, but he had a lot of fun. But yeah, I was always like working just seems like dumb. And so I was always, I'll just work somehow doing something. And then I'll always play music and do art and stuff on the side. And that was always was like, all right, I guess I'll just be happy with that. You know? Yeah. I Uh, I never really thought like how to. Yeah, make money and save money. I did money. art. I was big into art in high school. Like yeah. I loved drawing, and I always thought like maybe that would get me somewhere. But it was like you know my my dad was always Dude, like art doesn't pay, and it's so confusing because yeah, your parents don't know what to do. It your teachers don't know like, and there's nobody's telling you like okay, you don't have to be like the best artist in the world to make money. There's like a lot just like in in sports and shit. Like sure, you might not be in the NBA, but if you really fucking like basketball, you could like work on the college level as a coach or a trainer, like all these different yeah. in the in the industry and media. <laughs> like all, there's all these different jobs. And it's the same way with the arts, too. It's like, yeah, you might not be the guy, but you could be an editor or like whatever. All kinds of the different fucking ins and outs of the of the art world that need yeah. to be done. And I really think that high schools and colleges, for that matter, like 
I went to school for writing, dude. They never told me anything about how to get jobs or yeah. <laughs> like how to like apply for things or how to like send stuff out for publishing. You know, they would kind of vaguely like allude to like, oh, yeah, this is kind of what you do. But mostly it was like, oh, you should just keep going to school like forever. Yeah. You know, and it's Give like, well, money. what the fuck? Like there's and then you get out there and 10 years go by and it's like, well, yeah, there's a bunch of shit I could have done. I just like didn't know what it was at the time. Yeah. Um, Looking back, I should have gotten to financing. Yeah. I suck at math, but I could have worked at it too. Because I, I'd always do, if I do a lot of math and everything. Yeah. You know, I do fine. But if I don't do it for a long time, right, I'm fine with addition and multiplication. Yeah. Yeah. But you're, like algebra. Brain kind of loses it. Yeah. I yeah. I don't remember any of but, that stuff. I mean, you could, I could have gotten a finance degree of sorts. I, I would have had to have gone to a decent college, but then getting a job somewhere and like worked five years and fucking retired. Cause yeah. I knew people. I went to school with people that did that. Really? That does sound cool. Yeah, there's there's one girl, I don't know if this is factual, but she apparently did like a year of finance and yeah. quit. And I'm assuming she made a lot of money because she just like moved to California and did yoga for a living. Yeah, sure. But seemed to be doing good, but mm-hmm. it's like, how can you just fucking teach yoga and make a decent right. living? Well, I think a lot of, out there. yeah, you know, you know what another thing did is like when I graduated college in 06, around here, there was like, no jobs <laughs> like they yeah. they didn't even exist it was like <clears throat> you want to move i mean i even in all of michigan really like it was yeah. like i don't i don't even really know what to fucking do or where or where to go so it was like well i might as well just like move out west because i don't know like whatever it's cool out there at least yeah. um what was i gonna say though i had uh Oh, yeah, there is a thing of, like, it'd be cool to make a bunch of, get a job out of college, make a bunch of money, and then have, like, you know, 100 grand saved up that you could put into your own business and something. So then when you're, like, fucking 30, it's like, all right, I got a good start yep. on my own thing. And uh, it's an experience. But you don't you don't get the fun, rough and tumble upbringing of uh living paycheck to paycheck and not knowing what the fuck's going on i would be fine if i never experienced that (laughs) you know you you got to put yourself like people would say i never want that i would never do that that's not for me but it's like if you were born into that you would accept it right dude yeah for sure yeah like and i and i'm gonna be watching this world war ii documentary too uh, cause people always say, well, if I was, you know, if slavery, if I was around slavery, was in the South or if I was in Germany when they were killing Jews, I would never have done that. And, uh, they would have, that's, yeah, dude, that's yeah. who you were, where yeah. you were, the time you were in, you would have done that. Yeah. And one dude in this documentary, I forgot what it was called, but he said, people said they would have never served Hitler or, you know, try to appease him. And he's like, you would have, yeah. you, you fucking would have. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've been looking into Hitler's drug use lately. It's pretty interesting. He's a party boy. Oh, dude. <laughs> well, it was, it's an interesting, um, like the allies bombed the big, uh, uh, pharmaceutical plants in Germany. So at the end of the war, like Hitler couldn't get his, his opiates and amphetamines anymore. <sighs> So he and he didn't really know like what he was on. Like his doctors were were giving him these things because he demanded it, but he didn't really like yeah. know that he was like super addicted to opiates yeah, and stuff. Super fewer juice. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> then he so then in those last days, months of the war, he was probably going through like intense withdrawals, like in his bunker, just like what yeah. the fuck? Like yeah. what did I do? Oops. We all gotta kill ourselves now. <laughs> yeah. way out. yeah, just like <laughs> oh fuck, I might have fucked up. Like, yeah. <laughs> Oh, what I think I, I did what too much I math. Oh, yeah. Fuck. Dude, yeah, just oh, oh the God. fucking what a God, what a fucking horrible like. I know how that all like happened and, and how and they yeah, followed so him. scary and so intense and like and yeah, drugs were a big part of it though. Like yeah, they prescribed all all their soldiers drugs. There was like a uh, a stimulant mandate, I think, that it's like you have to take these drugs when, when we Yeah, tell you I to think for, they were carrying certain, meth around. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it worked for a while. Like I think they won a they won a lot of battles cuz they could travel further than any other armies and and you know, do these uh but you thought shit'll catch up, yeah. Yeah, that'll kids. <laughs> <laughs> like 
I don't Fucking... know. Like the beer hall poosh, he was probably just drunk. Yeah. Um, but after that, somewhere he got yeah. amphetamines. And like he wasn't originally like going to be killing Jews. Yeah. He was considering sending them to like Africa or Madagascar or some yeah. crap. And uh he that's probably where the amphetamines came right, in. Right, okay. it's like, like, I got an idea. Why would I ship them when yeah. I can kill them? Fuck like, you know? Evil. And. Yeah. Yeah, I've watched some. I I love World War II documentaries. It's super fucked up, but it's like. Yeah, I'll get history. into it. I'll get into it and then, uh, you know, I'll have my history sessions occasionally. All <laughs> the, you know, all the fucking David Byrne stuff. Or not David Byrne, but Ken Byrne stuff is pretty. Yeah. Fun to watch. And like the scariest thing to me is like with what's going on today, it's like almost identical with how World War II began in Germany. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and I'm not going to pick a side politically. I think both are wrong, but everyone is so fucking scared now that like as soon as one gets the upper hand, I think it's going to be just like when they were going around beating up Jews in the streets. Yeah. 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 Cause that's. Gina Carano, uh, that girl, that MMA actor chick, she got in mm. trouble for saying that. And like, she was just saying, hey, it wasn't just like Nazis killing people. The local Germans were going around beating Jews in the streets for them because they were basically, you know, brainwashed. Yeah. With yeah. All the social media. Well, not so they didn't have social media. It was like newspapers. Yeah. Propaganda. Yeah. And, uh, Hitler was calling Jews like murderous and making them out to look really bad. And people were like, they didn't know any better. Yeah, and it's for sure. like, they're like, Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah and and people can be manipulated. Yeah. Like, that's... Their, their economy was fucked just like ours is. Yeah, they were right. scared. They needed, they needed something. A reason. That, yeah. Like a, yeah. They needed to make sense in some way. Yeah. And yeah, the easiest way is like blaming someone else. And violence. Yeah. Fucking I... fuck David Swan. What's his name? What's the dude's name? The Swan guy. In Swan, town, yeah. the, with the FBI agents on his payroll. <laughs> oh, not Swan, David E. Taylor. Ah, Taylor. That's right, yeah. David Swan. It's my <laughs> David old, Swan. That was my dentist. Oh, okay. Fair <laughs> enough. Oh. <laughs> He's good. Does good. Does good work. <laughs> yeah. My fucking. dentist doesn't. I've got to get drilled again. And the last time he drilled, it already fucking hurts again. Yeah. Yeah. I won't say his name, but I'm not. You got to. Uh, to drill what? Like drill out bacteria in it? Like what? You need a root canal or what? I had a big ass cavity starting on one of my back molars. Yeah. It was huge too. Yeah. It was just in a fucked up spot, but, and they drilled like a big chunk of tooth out. Oh, okay, and then filled it after. Filled, they yeah, just... and like when I floss between that tooth, it feels like I'm pushing tin foil into a cavity. Ah, <sighs> oh, yeah, fuck and I gotta floss it too. Yeah, you know? right. You gotta keep it clean in there. <sighs> Well, I've been going to this place, Dentolutions, in town. A little free plug here, Dentolutions. And they've, Dentolutions. it's been really good. Yeah, it's been it's been really good. I was kind of leery at first because uh, whatever. But, but uh, yeah, they did really good. My tooth fell out, and they stuck it back in for me. Oh, really? Yeah, I had a, I got a cap on one of these. It's like I still got like a weird fang under it. It looks pretty crazy, really? actually. Yeah, dude, you, you get your tooth capped. I didn't really realize this when I got it like you know, five or six years ago. But I had a uh, root canal, and then they cap my tooth, and they like shave off your tooth. Yeah, you know, a little nub. A little nub, and then it's like here's. Then they put the fake one on top. But I didn't really realize that's what they were gonna do. And then like you, so when the tooth falls off, it's like oh, I have this crazy nub under here, yeah. like a like a fucking leviathan. Yeah, kinda. I had I had that done. Um, they capped it. I didn't realize how a cap worked. I had a little nub and like they left the room for a minute and I like took a picture of my nub with yeah, it. Yeah, I didn't realize. I I like I couldn't stop licking it. Yeah, licking the nub. Yeah. yeah it's like yeah. a weird little tooth nub. It was so weird. Yeah. So my cap fell out and that was that was pretty sad. But and I was really worried I was going to have to get an implant or something like that cuz I was like, ah, I mean, it was all rotten, fucked up. They shoved her back in. So thank you Dentolutions for oh, that nice. at a very reasonable price. Maybe I'll have a very check them out. good attitude. <laughs> good, dude. Teeth are tough, man. It's like, especially you get older, they start yeah. things start deteriorating faster. You know. Yeah, it sucks. Yeah, I just want dentures at this point. Really? I told my dentist that, and like everyone in the office heard me. They're like, "No, you don't." Yeah. I was like, you got a lot of good you. teeth. Your teeth are still good. Why do you want dentures? Uh, they're not great. 
Yeah. They're not, not great. great. No. <laughs> no. They're all jagged. They look good. No. Even the small... dentures, dude. There's just that one. But the, not even doesn't even the bad. They it's don't character. look bad, but everything's shaped weird. Oh, okay. Uh, I bite my tongue a lot. I bite oh. my cheek a lot. Yeah. Um, but dentures, you'd have to take them out at night, like an old yeah, man. Yeah. Who wants? I want to <laughs> suck on my guns to sleep. <laughs> who wants to grind their teeth to that's sleep when true. you can suck God, on your gums? That's true. I've had that problem more and more as I age too. I grind my. I grind them all what day. A fucking stupid thing. I try not. I like consciously have to be like, all right, relax your jaw, you fucking monkey. <laughs> yeah, um, it's the more I stress out, the more I grind. Yeah, that's what it is. Um, so luckily, I haven't been doing too much of that lately. But yeah, yeah. job's been going good. Yeah, work's been going great. Um, I just trained a new guy. God damn it. He's fucking slow as fuck. <laughs> Mentally and physically. Yeah. I'm worried about him taking over my old position, but it, just, it is what it is. Yeah. And I don't know where I'm going next because I was supposed to go into one department. And then I found out down at the headquarters they wanted me to go in another department which is the one i want to be in yeah and it's like the cream dream job mm. you do not easy stuff you have to do a lot of troubleshooting but you're not doing so much grunt work yeah yeah and uh not that there's a lot for this job i mean having done landscape install nothing's really grunt after yeah that. After that. <laughs> yeah but um i don't know what they're gonna do with me they down at the headquarters, they really like my attitude. I get along with everyone. So hopefully they put me into that position. Um, but we'll see what happens. I I did a few jobs for that position just yesterday. I killed it. Killed it good. Good man. A good kill. Yeah. <laughs> Righteous. Yeah. But I really yeah, wish cool. we could open it Well, that's good. That piece. sounds exciting. Yeah. Yeah. It's good stuff. Yeah. I had a dude drop into Mammoth the other day uh, while I wasn't there, and he was looking for me. And he runs a, oh, a yeah. label downstate. Oh, I was texting yeah. you about Did it. Did you get back to him? Yeah, I talked to him a little bit. And he I wanted just that sent wiener. him some stuff. He wanted the wiener, dude. He wanted it. Pretty cool, dude. Pretty cool. We'll see where it goes, you know. Um, but yeah, there's it's a little uh, small label, very small. But they have they just got a licensing deal through another label that's actually a pretty big label putting stuff up on like tv shows and shit like that really so yeah pretty cool man <clears throat> pretty cool he said uh one of his one of the bands on it just got some stuff on shameless you know that show oh really it's a real show yeah so yeah that they just did their last season too yeah because of that one band probably <laughs> probably dude <laughs> they fucked the up. end so mm -hmm. that's fun so yeah things are good summer times in full swing yeah i'm gonna miss shameless I would. I really like the first few seasons. Yeah, I definitely you, like binged it. They, like, did you hear? I guess like that Emily Rosebaum chick who the played Fiona. Girl. Yeah, like there was a deal. There was an issue where she wanted as much money as what's his face who the, plays Frank, the drunk guy. Yeah. Like, what? Come on. Well, she, they fucked, dude. She had basically every episode had to get naked and get fucked that's by good, someone. That's a good point. That's a good and point. And she was doing rough shit, too. Yeah, that's a good point. And just as bad as him, sometimes yeah. worse. Oh, uh, he was bad. He was bad, real bad. You're right. You're right. He but really didn't have to do as much, as much nudity. acting. And yeah, yeah, he just could kind of be a sloppy drunk and she yeah. really had to get emotional and stuff. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's a good point. I just thought, like, he's such an old been around so long i figure you kind of demand a premium when you're like a well-known actor like that like the frank dude you know yeah pretty much yeah that is kind of fucked up because like younger people are like well i I'm deserve the same more, but then it's like yeah but this guy's old and like he's an old guy yeah <laughs> and everybody knows who he is too so i will there's... say her acting was incredible though yeah she i agree so much Although that I, I would not have sex with her in real I life. I kind of got annoyed. She was, after a while, I was like, oh, God, yeah. your life is such a mess. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <together>. exactly. <laughs> Reminds me of girls I know. Yeah, for sure. Too much. Stop fucking these dudes at the bar. Yeah, like, 
but yeah, like it, it was so good. Like I like if I see because yeah. I, I love actresses, they're all beautiful, and I'm like, oh, I'd always have sex with them. Blah, blah, blah. And like her, <laughs> so probably not so much. Yeah, because <laughs> like they, her character was she's, so dirty. It's a hell of an it, actress. It was, then. Yeah, yeah, hell of an yeah, hell of a job. Hell yeah. of a job. I probably would. Yeah, you kidding, know you would. But, <laughs> but yeah, it was just like I was so used to being like girl what the fuck that yeah. it was just disgusting yeah very relatable that is funny it's like oh yeah and everybody, reminded me everybody of girls knows I knew. her yeah everybody's got one her around yeah so what's for next episode are we gonna get into preterness or like what do you think i've we're i'm gonna, gonna have, to, have to do some serious yeah like, we'll have to we'll have to do some like pre uh some like pre-production on that I yeah think. i need to get a fucking house so we can That's start true. this up get That's our true. laptops cubicles I can <laughs> just get the business pumping beep, 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 beep. yeah <laughs> Clint, yeah, i'm sending you an email we got something on the ap yeah ap wire <laughs> coming in yeah <laughs> <laughs> there was um an episode of come town yeah like they start the episodes by like doing songs and changing the words to like gay stuff sure that's fun vulgar stuff but they did one where it was like an old timey radio broadcast. Mm-hmm. Oh my god, it was so bad. He's like, <laughs> he was doing radio voice, and he's like, beep 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 beep. beep. He's like, it's okay to. I'm gonna say what he said cleaner. He said, yeah. it's okay to have sex with men, <laughs> and he kept saying that. And he's like, it is April first, nineteen thirty. This is our April Fool's joke for the year. <laughs> <laughs> And then they kept going on, and they're just like, big news in Germany. This Hitler fella, everybody's favorite, <laughs> just like, <laughs> breaking hearts. Uh, good. Yeah, yeah I'd like so to, fucked up. I've been getting more into just like, yeah, goofy shit like that, dude. It's fun. It's nice to not listen to, I don't, dude, all the fucking comedian podcasts have gotten like so stale. It's just like, dude, I can't listen to anything yeah, about the comedy store comedy. or yeah. like all this shit. Oh, God, I don't yep. care. I don't care. I don't care. No one I don't, I don't care fun. about like um, your booking agent and when you open for so and so at the funny bone. And I'm just like, whatever. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Now, like, comedians are just, like, they got to talk about their startups, like, when they began and who they saw and blah, blah, blah. It's it's, like, no one, okay. It was kind of the first, like, 20 times, you know, the first, it was pretty interesting. I thought at first because I could relate it to my own kind of career, too, or you can relate it to any career. It's like, oh, it's when you start up, you got to work hard and fucking take chances and blah, blah. At a certain point, it's just like, oh, Jesus. I don't, it's not that hard, dude. Yeah. <laughs> <I'm> like, okay. <laughs> There's a comedian I'm going to send you a video of, JC Kiris. Yeah. There's a real good one he does about tripping on acid and watching American Werewolf in London. But all his stuff is very good. Um, He's a gigantic dude. He wears like tropical shirts. He probably weighs like 500 pounds. Awesome. Love but it all. He, he like screams kind of when he does his stand up. Yeah. And it's just fucking hilarious. Um, there was a good show running for a while called This Isn't Happening. Yeah. Yeah. That was with Ari. Yeah. Ari Shapiro's yeah. show. That was really good. And then they good. ditched him for. Yeah. They like stole his show. Yeah, I came up with that show. I think. Well, it's the never their anything. show. Like it's probably their idea. Yeah, they right. Get they on a sell network it to and the... the network takes it. Yeah. Um. But they, I forgot who they replaced him with. But I, that was like my favorite stand-up comedy. Yeah, that was ever. a good they one. Were just telling the most fucked up stories. Yeah, ever. for sure. Yeah, that was a good one. Yeah. Know, yeah. Who did they replace him with? Like I... some black dude. I can't remember his name. Yeah. Is it still on? I don't think it's on anymore. Yeah, I don't think it is either. Um. But... I loved I th- I think it was TJ Miller was on it. Yeah. He was pretty funny. And he was I could be mixing things up, but he was uh in a on the border of Mexico and America coming back and I think he was like heavily intoxicated or mm-hmm. on some kind of drugs and they were like about to arrest him and shit was getting really intense and then he just like fucking realized he's an American citizen American citizen he's like I am an American citizen mm-hmm. you cannot contain me and walked right over I guess like <laughs> 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 or detain me yeah. um 
Yeah, does that's that work? Hilarious. You can do I, that, I guess. If you don't have any illegal, if all the illegal substances are just in your body, yeah, exactly. Booyah! Yeah, <laughs> smuggle that shit in my blood. Yeah, some of those stories were really good. I think Rogan did one. Yeah, I know Joey Diaz did one. I can remember there was one that. Yeah, there's a couple of them. I think Theo Vaughn did one. The bunch, everybody did it. It was funny. It was funny have shit. you ever seen the show Your Pretty Face is Going to Hell? Mm-mm. Um, so there's another podcast I listen to called Last Podcast on the Left. Yeah, I've heard of that one. The dude Henry Zabowski from that does Your Pretty Face is Going to Hell. This is like a chain of connections. On that show is a dude, I forget his name, old school comedian. Um, they put him on This Is Not Happening or This Isn't Happening. And he is funny as shit. He was talking about like how he was like a little communist socialist growing up, I guess. Yeah. And like he fucked his teacher in college or something. Yeah. And like it was it was funnier when he when I just said it, it just sounds fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> but it his That's story why they was get paid funny. the big bucks. I know, I yeah, know. Dude. All right, well, we better wrap this bad boy up. Yeah. There nice little shorty here. for the day. Yeah, pretty long actually. Power thirty. Yeah, it's not bad. It's yeah. accept- very acceptable. That's acceptable. <laughs> That's acceptable. All right. Fodder fire. Right? Not fire fodder. Fodder fire. Fodder fire. Yeah, fodder fire. You said firefighter on uh on the intro to one of them. Yeah, that's all right though. I didn't change it. Well, I was like, this is how much I don't <laughs> care. <laughs> we'll, we'll do an intro song instead. <laughs> I like the little intros. I want to keep doing the little intros. <laughs> all right. All right. See you everybody. Peace.